Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make this awesome farmhouse table start to finish. You're gonna to wanna to watch to the end where I do a grand reveal with an actual paying client. This is an awesome video. You're watching Timberman TV, let's get into it. So the first step is getting all of our four by four cut down to the appropriate sizes, which after doing this for a while, I've created a jig on my miter saw table. So I have all these marks on my saw. I have all these different measurements and marks on my table. So these are cheats that I can just set my wood right up to those marks cut. And I know that they're going to be the same every single time. If you don't have this, obviously you can measure each piece, mark it and cut it. But if you do have a miter saw table, then it's easier to set up jigs so you can just put the wood right to it and cut. I'm going to repeat that four times to get a top and bottom on each side of the base. Now we have our four pieces for our top and our bottom. And as you saw in the beginning on the sample, there's an angled cut on the ends of these. So I have another jig on here where I turn my saw to a 45 degree angle and there's another mark here of where to set my 4x4. So now you can see we have those angled cuts for the bottom and then also the top piece of our trestle base. So we're going to repeat that to all four legs. Right, now we have all four pieces cut for the bottom and the top of the trestle base with their 45 degree cuts on the ends. And we need two of these. Alright, so here's the two king posts in the center of the trestle base. These are at 21 inches. Remember the first cut I did for the top and bottom are at 32 inches. Now we're going to cut those 45 angled pieces that go from our top and bottom piece to that center post. You're going to start with a 45 degree angle and cut off the end. Then I have a jig set up for this as well with a mark on the fence of my saw. Obviously if you set up marks here you don't want to move your fence otherwise it will mess up your measurement. In this case, this is all good. So this is what those angle pieces will look like. And we need eight of them, four on each side. I take the same stock, rotate it, move it to that same mark. If you ever have just a little piece left, we still need the two little kicker pieces that go from the cross rail up into the trestle side. That's going to be the smaller mark here. And I can get that out of this piece. All right, the last piece we need to cut is the cross member across both of those trestle bases. In this case, it's going to be for a six foot table that I have marked out down here, which is a 49 inch cut. be our cross member across the two pieces. All right, so we're going to take all the pieces that we just cut and make this trestle base, laying them out one at a time. I'm going to take those first two long pieces, remember these were the 32 inches, stack them like this, one on top of another, and I'm going to go to center, which is 16 inches, and just make a little mark here. Open them up. Now I'll take our 21 inch king stud, place that right in the center of those marks you just made. Remember this is a super, super basic trestle set. A lot of people do mortise and tendon, all this different joinery for the beginner woodworker. This is the easiest way to get that same look without all the complications of doing crazy carpentry with mortise and tendon and different joinery. So we're going to angle Brad now into the sides. I put three up top. 
three at bottom. Then we're going to take those 45 cuts and go up to the top and the bottom. So you can line them out how you want them. And then the trick I like to do is take one of your squares before putting it on and make sure that this piece is square. Then we're going to brad nail to each side. Same thing on the top. Make sure this is square first. These cuts should line up if it is square. Alright, so you just created your very first super basic, super easy X trestle base. From here, there's a multitude of things we can do to this. I like to, on an easy way, drive screws through here just to add extra support. You can glue it, then we can come in and fill or take a grinder and distress the heck out of this thing and make it look super old, which will clean all of this up. So we're going to duplicate that process, make the second one, and then add our cross member. Alright, now that we have our two bases made, I'm going to separate them, put the centerpiece in, and finish this base. So this center piece is going to go the same height as another 4x4 four four, right to the center of that king stud. Repeat that on the other side. Now we're going to take these little pieces that we made to put them here as our bracing. That helps these from not racking back and forth. All right, so that was just a super basic way to assemble this base. However, I recommend, which is what I'm gonna do right now, is come back and drill. I do three inch screws into all of our connections. We're gonna come back and putty over those screw holes so that we can prime and paint this base. This is the most basic beginner way to make a base like this. If you're an expert carpenter, you will hate this way, but if you're a beginner and you don't know how to do all the technical joinery and mortise and tenon, this is a good place to start. Alright, so I'm using Minwax Special Walnut for the color of this base, which is going to have a matching top. I'm going to douse this thing and roll all of it and come back and then take a rag and wipe it. So step one, Get your roller and just start lathering this on. Look how awesome this color looks. All right, now I'm gonna take some rags and wipe the stain down. If you wait too long to do this, the stain will start to dry dark and you wanna make sure you get it off while it's wet, which will expose more of that grain pattern. So let's start wiping. <laughs> Uh, let's take a closer look at the stain. Look how that green just pops off of there. That looks fantastic. This is super simple to build. You guys can knock this out, especially a first time woodworker, carpenter. I mean, this just looks incredible. Love that special walnut stain. All right, so to start on this table top, we're gonna use a three quarter inch sheet of ply, and then I have my one by eights. I'm gonna lay these out across the ply and make sure that my seams are tight before I start attaching them to the ply. So let's do that now. All right, so that's gonna work. Next step, I'm gonna glue and brad nail each one of these down and clamp anything I need to to make sure those seams are nice and tight. All right, so this is the glue I'm using. Type on three. We're gonna come full length of this guy. This is gonna be a full eight foot table. Turn it over. I like to kind of go back and forth, spread that glue out. We're using an 18 gauge brad nailer. 
inch and a quarter, inch and a half nails. All right, so we're gonna repeat that same process to every single one of these boards and then clamp and make sure that everything is nice and tight. Now that that part's done, we're gonna take some wood filler from Minwax, come into these seams here and fill them all up, make sure it's all nice and clean. That one, when we come back to sand, it'll be smooth as butter. All right, so I took some two by four and I ripped them down so that there's a nice straight edge on one side. That way when we skirt the sides of this, it'll be nice and flush. However, I'm gonna take a string line and make a nice even cut straight across. We're gonna cut straight down the ply here as well as on that side, then attach our skirting, finish putting, and then we can move to sanding. You can see after cutting those straight lines, starting to look a little bit more like a tabletop and we cut the excess plywood off on this side. So now we're gonna take those two by four, skirt it, do more putty, and then start sanding. All right, now that skirting's on, so we're gonna putty, sand, get to the fun part with getting some color on this thing. And now we're done sanding. This looks unbelievable. You won't believe that that was the same pile of one by eights that you started with. This is looking awesome. Got all that putty in there, everything sanded, everything smooth, the skirting's on. Looks absolutely beautiful. Ready for some color. All right, so it's time for my favorite part and getting some color on this tabletop. Same special walnut from Minwax. And again, I'm gonna cover the entire tabletop before wiping all the stain off. Now we're gonna grab a rag and wipe off that excess stain. Try to take a closer look at how that grain popped off of there. Love this color, special walnut. And that's just one coat. Let it sit for four or five minutes and then come back and wipe it. So we're currently driving the table to the client's house. You can see it there strapped down in the bed. So here's the table installed at the client's house. They're actually walking in right now. So let's see what their reaction is to the table. Sweet. I love it. It awesome. is beautiful. Thank you so much, it's guys. So pretty.